What's good guys, it is 24th of April, it's a Monday and for today we will not be doing a daily market analysis in view of yesterday's elections in France. Um, when markets opened up this morning, there were there were quite huge gaps on euro pairs. Um, the euro spiked up about, it gapped up about 200 pips, so it kind of put off some of our analysis that we did on a Sunday. Uh, as you know, as you, if you've seen the video, we were looking for a potential Gartley pattern right here, completion coming right around here. However, the spike uh, that the elections caused uh, just blew through that level. Uh, however, it did respect this uh, structure level area right here. So, um, we'll only be doing a daily market analysis on Tuesday when markets have uh, settled down and, you know, prices have just uh, begun to act. Uh, as they were previously. However, the the other pair that we uh, we identified on the weekly market preview on Sunday was the pound dollar. We identified this uh, bullish flag pattern right here. Uh, and as you can see, when markets opened up right here at this candle, <coughs> price pushed up. However, still respected this uh, this uh, flag right here, respected the resistance of this flag. So this would be a potential opportunity that we can look at if price were to push down into this um this area right here if price can push down into this support level we can potentially look for a bullish breakout right here uh, if you are more conservative you could wait for a bullish breakout and possibly a retest of this resistance level of the upper flag so this was this will be the potential trade that we are going to take if price manages to do as we expected all right so in view of today's uh, no daily market analysis we will be going through the rsi because uh, some of our students have asked how we trade the RSI and how we use the RSI in our analysis. As you know, uh, here at Elementary FX, we, um, we go through the thought process, the EPDSFR thought process, and S stands for structure, F for Fibonacci, and R for RSI. So we do use RSI quite frequently in our analysis. So this is an overview of the RSI. Uh, this will be, the, we'll be doing the testing on the EURUSD 60 minute chart from uh, the start of the year, January, until the end of January. So, the RSI stands for the Relative Strength Index. Um, it identifies overbought and oversold levels. Uh, it, ident it identifies overbought and oversold conditions in the market. So, this is the RSI right here, this indicator, the one in purple. Um, basically, it is scaled from 0 all the way up to 100. So, if I were to just um, look at the settings for you, this is the settings that we use here. We conventional conventional settings are 70 and 30. 70 being price being overbought and 30 being price oversold. However, here at Elementary FX, we use the settings of 80 and 20 so that we can filter out the more extreme opportunities that will present itself to us on the different charts. So when we use some um, okay, before I go through how we use the RSI, basically if price were to go up. Or increase the RSI will typically follow and if price falls the RSI typically falls so what we want to look out for in in price and the RSI are what you call divergences the RSI divergence we use the RSI to look out for divergences in the trade for potential turning points in the market so um, what I mean by divergences is that if price does this RSI will not do this however it might do this and if price does this, RSI will do this. Let me just go through a, uh, an, an opportunity for you. So as you can see right here, <clears throat> if I zoom it in, price, price made a move up like this. Price made a move down and the RSI followed suit. Price made a move up and RSI made a move up also. However, as you can see, while price made higher highs, what did RSI do? RSI made higher lows, suggesting that this uptrend right here was not going to sustain itself and was possibly weakening. And this would have been a pretty decent entry for a short for a short opportunity. And as you can see, price um dropped about 95 pips after the RSI after the divergence in RSI. So this is how we use the RSI divergence. We want to look out for prices making higher highs while the RSI making higher lows because this suggests that if I were to just uh, go through this review, price did this, RSI did this, so there is an uptrend. 
price made a retracement, so did RSI. Price made a push up, however, the RSI made a push up but not to the level of the previous RSI. As you can see, it didn't go up to this level, creating a higher low, sorry, a lower high. So therefore, this divergence suggests that this uh, uptrend right here, this uptrend right here, let me just clear the screen for you. This uptrend right here was not a strong trend up and there was a potential, uh, there, were, there could potentially be a, a short opportunity at the top right here. So this is one um, opportunity. If I were to show you another one, we can see that, um, let me just, uh, another opportunity that we can see will be this area right here. You can see that price has made a push down. So has the RSI. Let me just move it this side. Price made a push up. So did the RSI. Price made a push down. So did the RSI. What can we see here? We can see that price has made lower lows. However, the, RS made, the RSI has made higher lows, suggesting that this trend right here, this downward movement right here is not going to sustain itself, suggesting a weakness in this downtrend and potentially bias entering the market around this area right here. And as you can see at the reversal point, price made a push up for about 73 pips. So this is how you use the RSI. We call this an RSI convergence. RSI convergence means that price is converging with RSI and an RSI divergence means price is diverging from RSI. So this is how we look out for potential trading opportunities where price might reverse in our favor. I'm just going to go through one final opportunity. Um, and as you can see, we have one more right here. It's a very nice example. We have price making a push downwards. And we have price making a retracement before price makes a push downwards again. And RSI follows suit. However, what can you see here? We can see that price has made lower lows. However, the RSI has made higher lows, suggesting that there is a weakness in this trend and we can potentially look for a long opportunity. And in this case, you can see that price has made a nice, um, a nice move upwards for about over 100 pips. So this is how you use the RSI in your analysis. Um, I'm not saying that you can, you should only use the RSI. You should definitely use price action. And in the case of how we trade, we use the SFR process, which which we teach at the in our elementary course. Uh, the SFR process combines structure, Fibonacci, and RSI. So if you combine those, and all of uh, and all of those thought processes are in your favor with very good um very good uh, analysis, you have a potential for a very good trade. Uh, for example, this trade right here, you can see that price is a. Uh, let's go through the SFR process in this. We we have a structure right here. We have a very nice support level. If I were to draw a line right here, let's see if price has reacted previously. Yep, you can see that price has reacted to this area right here in the form of support and we have some consolidation over here. So this would be a decent level of our structure. Now, do we have any Fibonacci levels? Let's look at this swing right here. And if we take an extension of this swing, Swing high to swing low, so that was a retracement. Swing high to swing low, back up. Do we get a 1414 level at that area? As you can see, the 1414 level reacts very nicely. So, if we were to do our analysis on this trade, we can say that price, there has been a very nice area of structure here in the form of support previously. And so, we have identified a potential Fibonacci level. A 1414 if price manages to push lower. However, if you uh, were more aggressive, you would have you would have set a buy limit right here instead of the 1414 if you were conservative you would have set it at a 1618 but for let's just uh, pretend that this was a perfect analysis so we set our buy limit at the 1414 level and at the 1414 level we notice that there is a divergence in this case a convergence of RSI with price making lower uh, lower lows however the RSI make the RSI is making 
higher lows. So this would have been a perfect EPD SFR process. We have structure, we have Fibonacci and we have RSI divergence and in this trade, we would have made over 100 pips. So this is uh, how you do the RSI. Um, this will be the first of many more episodes where we go through the different indicators and how you can use them. I was actually thinking of uh, using, uh, of teaching how, or going through the CCI today. However, uh, some of our students have requested the RSI because the RSI is more is more popular, more popularly used, and uh, we use it more often than than other indicators. So, thank you guys for joining me, and I'll see you on Tuesday for the week for the daily market analysis.